Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with a review of a multi-pattern XLR condenser microphone. So today we're reviewing this guy, the AKG P420 bro. Toke him up, Johnny. <laughs> I hate myself. Uh, if you do want to pick up this guy, it'll set you back between 150 and 200 bucks. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I got the mic connected directly to the 2i2 second gen with 48 volts on and my gain set at around 11 o'clock. Not going to do any post processing, but I will likely boost it in post. So check the doobly doo to see what I diddly did. This is a terrible thing to throw, but let's see what's in the box. Jesus, that's a dumb idea. If you don't break it when you throw it, you do get a rather nice hard shell storage box. You will obviously get the microphone. You get a shock mount, which does come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and you get some extra shock mount bands, but no documentation because, you know, 420 bro, you gotta stay green and save the planet and trees are good. F*** me. <laughs> As far as the build quality, nothing really stands out as amazing or bad. It's just straight middle of the road. It does have an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill without much give to it, which is nice. And it also has a good amount of weight to it. On the front of the microphone, you will find a single polar pattern selection switch to switch between cardioid, omni, or bi-directional. Then on the back of the microphone, you got a high pass filter, man which rolls off frequencies around 300 hertz at 12 decibels per octave, and it has a negative 20 decibel pad. Then as far as the specs, this thing has a cardioid, omnidirectional, and bidirectional polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 31 decibels, an output impedance, which is less than 200 ohms, a max SPL of 135 to 155 decibels, a self noise level of 15 dBA, a signal to noise ratio of 79 dBA, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Right now, I'm speaking into the microphone on the cardioid polar pattern, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm on the omnidirectional polar pattern, and this is how the audio sounds. And now I'm on the figure eight or bidirectional polar pattern, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm spinning around the microphone on the cardioid mode to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to 180 degrees to show you how it sounds from the rear. Continue around to the second 90 degree angle and then end at the front of the microphone. Now I'm on the omnidirectional polar pattern spinning it around and you should hear almost no tonal change or drop in volume as we move around the microphone's capsule. And now I'm on the bi-directional polar pattern moving around to 90 degrees where it should have the deadest zone of any of these polar patterns. We'll continue around to the rear of the microphone which should be quite loud similar to the front. Continue around to the second dead spot of the figure eight polar pattern and rotate around and end at the front. Now of course I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect. And now I've initialized the high pass filter to show you how much of the low end is removed when you enable this switch. About three inches away from the microphone, one foot away from the microphone, two feet from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now let's go ahead and test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. <laughs> AKG, it was so clear to see that the P420 was a really stupid name. Yeah. Okay, so in all honesty, this microphone just doesn't stand out to me. But I guess in terms of pros, this thing doesn't really color the audio that much all the way around to 90 degrees. And it also has a pretty nice build quality as well as a nice shock mount and a really nice storage box. But then in terms of cons, the 15 dBA noise floor on this thing is definitely not ideal if you're looking at it for professional applications. And also the bi-directional and omnidirectional polar patterns have a significantly quieter sensitivity. 
Then as far as my overall thoughts on this microphone, on the electric guitar, I thought it sounded a little bit loose in the lower frequency, so if you need your recording to sound really tight, I wouldn't really recommend it there. The acoustic guitar, on the other hand, was a completely different story, where it offered a really nice articulate top end and a nice full low end, which I rather liked. Then for singing, it does have a good amount of clarity to it, but it leans ever so slightly towards being sibilant and a little bit airy. But on the good side, it does have a really flat midsection, which I am personally a very big fan of. And lastly, for spoken word, this microphone does have a very bright tone focusing on the more breathy and airy frequencies, but it does have a more subtle change from the flat midsection to the treble and air frequencies when compared to something like the P220 or the P120. And now, would I recommend this microphone? Well, for music, I do think it would be okay for that because you don't have to worry too much about the self-noise because that will likely get buried in your instrumentation. So if you do like the tone, sure, go for it. It's fun to have the extra polar patterns to play around with if you're doing duets or you need to record some gang vocals for your hardcore band or something. But personally, it just didn't blow me away for that use case. So I personally probably wouldn't be selecting this microphone for my personal music studio. But then on the other hand, for professional voiceover work, I don't think the 15 dBA self noise is going to be usable for you. You may end up getting pushback from your client saying there's just too much of a noise floor in your recordings. And then if you're a gamer or a podcaster, I think I've drilled this home about a thousand times by now, but I don't necessarily recommend condenser microphones unless you have a fully treated room and a quiet keyboard and mouse and all of that stuff. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos like this, go ahead and watch some videos over there or subscribe by clicking the bell button below here next to my name thingy. Check out the Discord server, link in the description. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.